Dear students, welcome to EPG Patsala. I am Dr. Vyas Rajput, Emeritus Scientist at National Dairy Research Institute in the Department of Animal Biochemistry. Today, I am going to teach you about the scanning electron microscope. The electron scanning microscope is a powerful microscopic tool developed by Dr. Charles Oatley. It utilizes focused beam of high energy electrons to generate a variety of signals at the surface of solid specimens which reveal information about the sample including external morphology, chemical composition and crystalline structure and orientation of materials. In most applications, data are collected over a selected area of the surface of the sample and a three-dimensional image is generated. It can magnify image of any sample ranging from 20x to approximately 30,000x. This high resolution magnification is routinely used to generate high resolution images and to show special variations in chemical compositions. It is also widely used for precise measurement of very small features and objects below 50 nanometer in size. Dear students, in today's lecture, we will focus on understanding a very important and critical microscopic technique that is scanning electron microscopy. It is popularly referred as SEM that is SEM. The lecture will provide details on working principle of this particular technique and the instrumentation setup and working of scanning electron microscope. Lastly, we will also look at various advantages and disadvantages of scanning electron microscopy. This flow diagram shows the concept map that will be followed during this lecture. We will first study the working principle of scanning electron microscope. The various components of scanning electron microscope which include electron source, lenses, scanning coils, sample chamber and detectors. In the next section, we will cover the various steps involved in the working of scanning electron microscope. The sample preparation of techniques for scanning electron microscope will also be discussed. And lastly, advantages, drawbacks and various applications of scanning electron microscope will be outlined. Typical image of a scanning electron microscope is shown at right side of the slide. The scanning electron microscope is a powerful microscopic tool that utilizes electrons to form a magnified image of a specimen under study. It is a magnification tool that produces high resolution three dimensional images which provide information on topography, morphology and composition of sample or the specimen. The information so obtained helps assist in a large number of science based and industrial applications. The microscope that is scanning electron microscope was developed by Dr. Charles Oatley. The principle on which scanning electron microscopy works is the same as that of the light microscope. 
but the difference lies on the use of the focused beam of high energy electrons instead of photons. You may note that the in light microscopy, the photons are used for the sample visualization. The electrons carry significant kinetic energy. When the incident electrons strike the sample surface, the energy from these electrons is dissipated as a variety of signals. The signals are generated as a result of interactions that take place between electron and the sample. These signals include secondary electrons, backscattered electrons, diffracted backscattered electrons, X-rays, visible light and heat. Production of scanning electron microscopic images utilize the secondary and backscattered electrons. Whereas, the crystalline structure, orientation of minerals and microfabrics are determined by diffracted backscattered electrons. The X-rays are used for the elemental analysis. This slide shows the various components present in scanning electron microscope. This includes electron source, electromagnetic lenses, a scanning coil, sample chamber and detectors. Additionally, computer setup and related peripherals are also required. Electron source is one of the important component of scanning electron microscope. There are three common types of electron sources. First one, tungsten electron filament. This is basic type of electron source. It produces electrons when filament is heated resistively. Second is the solid state crystal, lanthanum hexachloride or barium hexachloride. This source is thermoionic emission gun. It is the most common high brightness source and offers about 5 to 10 times brightness as that of tungsten filament. Also the lifetime of the electron source is much longer than its tungsten filament counterpart. Third source of the electron is field emission gun. As the name suggests, this source uses field electron emission for production of the electron beam. The small tip radius of field emission gun provides improved emission and focusing ability. Electrons generated by these sources are accelerated to a voltage range of 1 to 40 kilovolt and then further focused into a narrow beam that can be used for the purpose of image formation and analysis of the same. Lens system is used to focus the electron beam but they are different than the optical lens used in light microscope. Lens system in scanning electron microscope is not made up of glass. I must repeat it. These are not made from the glass as we usually see in the light microscope. A series of condenser lenses in scanning electron microscope are used to focus the electron beam as it passes through the microscopic column. The narrowness of the beam determines what is going to the size of the spot when it will be contacting the surface. These lenses are tubes 
wrapped in coil and referred as solenoids. The purpose of the scanning coils is to deflect the focus electron beam in x and y axis so that it is scans in a raster fashion over the sample surface. Sample chamber consists of an evacuated chamber where sample is mounted and placed. It can also include additional devices to assist in sample imaging such as translation stage, tilt and rotation devices, temperature stages and optical cameras. Detector is also one of the important component of scanning electron microscope. The electrons coming out of the sample are collected on detectors. A variety of detectors used are discussed here. Secondary electron detector detects low energy electrons ejected from the k orbitals of the sample atoms. Electrons are accelerated towards a scintillator which in turn produces a current. The current is directed towards a photomultiplier and the amplified signal is read on the monitor. One example of the secondary detector is Everhard Thornley detector. High energy electrons are produced as a result of elastic scattering interactions with specific atoms in the sample. The electrons are reflected backwards by sample atoms. These detectors can be scintillators or semiconductors and are referred as backscatter electron detector. Diffracted backscattered electrons can be used for determining crystallographic structure of sample. These electrons can also be used for determining orientation of minerals and microfabrics. X-rays can be used for elemental analysis. In addition, a stable power supply, vacuum and cooling system is required. A vibration free space that isolates the instrument from ambient magnetic and electric field is also required. This slide depicts positions of various components in a scanning electron microscope. Electron source is at top and underneath is aperture, condenser lens, aperture, objective lens and sample holder in sequence. Detectors are located sideways. Dear students, for understanding electron scanning microscopy, it is essential to understand instrumentation part as well as the principle on which this microscope works. By now, it should be clear that electron instead of photons as in case of a light microscope are used in scanning electron microscope. Generated electrons are accelerated and then condensed before these fall on sample. After electron interaction with sample, these can generate different signals which are analyzed by detectors. Working principle of electron scanning microscopy will be elaborated in next section. Preparation of sample for scanning electron microscopy is important. Sample preparation method will also be explained. There are several applications, advantages, disadvantages and limitations in scanning electron microscopy. 
these aspects will also be covered towards the end of my presentation. The working steps followed in scanning electron microscope are listed here. The electron guns placed at the top of column produces high energy electrons. These electrons are accelerated down and allowed to pass through a combination of electromagnetic lenses. The lenses help to produce a focused electron beam. The electron beam moves in vacuum across a vertical path through the microscope. The sample chamber area is evacuated by a combination of pumps. The sample is placed inside the chamber. The scanning coils are adjusted to allow the electron beam to be focused on the sample surface. Beam scattering enables information for the sample to be collected on a defined area on which the beam has been focused. The operator can adjust the beam through a computer to control magnification and surface area to be scanned. Interaction between incident electrons and the sample surface leads to release of a number of energetic electrons from the sample surface. The interaction leads to a specific scattering of electrons, for example, back scattered electrons, secondary electrons, which can provide information on size, shape, texture and composition of the sample. The electrons are collected by detectors and converted into signal. The signals are sent to a screen to produce black and white three dimensional image. It is important to note that areas ranging from approximately 1 centimeter to 5 microns in width can be imagined by scanning electron microscope with a magnification ranging from 20x to approximately 30,000x. The interaction between incident electrons and the surface of the sample is determined by the acceleration rate of uh, incident electrons. Because the scanning electron microscope utilizes vacuum conditions and uses electrons to form an image, a special preparation must be done for the preparation of the sample. Two most commonly used methods for sample preparation in case of uh, scanning electron microscopy are sputter coating for non-conductive samples and dehydration of most biological specimens. In addition, it is required that all samples are able to withstand low pressure inside the vacuum chamber. In case the sample to be observed under scanning electron microscope is a metal, no preparation is required because metals are conducting in nature. For biological specimens, dehydration is important. The removal of water from sample is needed because the water would vaporize in vacuum. The samples are gradually treated in presence of increasing concentrations of acetone, say 10 percent, 30 percent, 50 percent, 70 percent and then 100 percent to dehydrate the sample. In case the sample to be observed under scanning electron microscope is a non-metal, it has to be made conducting. 
in case the sample is to be observed under a scanning electron microscope is a known metal, it has to be made conducting. This is achieved by covering the sample with a thin layer of conductive material such as gold. A device called a sputter coater which operates in presence of electric field and argon gas is used to form this gold coating. Argon gas and an electric field removes an electron from the argon atoms making them positively charged. The argon cations are then attracted to a negatively charged gold foil where they knock down gold atoms from the surface of the foil. The gold atoms therefore settle on the sample surface to produce a gold coating. Advantages of a scanning electron microscopy are discussed here. Three dimensional imaging and topographical, morphological and compositional information can be obtained with scanning electron microscope. The technique of scanning electron microscope is user friendly, fast and easy to operate. Digital data generation is possible. The technique finds applications in detection, identification and analysis of surface fracture, microstructures, surface contaminants, crystal structures. It provides high resolution as well as larger area can be focused at one time as compared to traditional microscopes. We can have increased control on the degree of magnification in scanning electron microscopy. There are several disadvantages of scanning electron microscopy. It is expensive, large in size, requires proper housing and maintenance. Operators required to be especially trained for operation, data analysis and interpretation. Artifacts generated during sample preparation can be addressed only with the help of experienced researchers. The technique is limited to solid or inorganic samples. Samples have to be small enough to fit inside the vacuum chamber. Sample must be stable in vacuum and should be able to withstand vacuum pressure. There is a mild risk of exposure to radiation with electrons that have scattered from beneath the sample surface. Non-conducting sample to be observed under conventional scanning electron microscopy needs to be specifically coated with electrically conducted material. It does not provide information on living cells or sample. It is only applicable for fixed samples which are not living. A scanning electron microscopy has a number of applications which include that this technique can measure very small features and objects down to 50 nanometer in size. The technique deciphers special variations in chemical composition. Back scattered electron images can be used for 
rapid discrimination of phases in multi phase samples. Wide array of applications, including industrial and technological applications. It is essential research tool in life science, biology, medical and forensic science and metallurgy area. Dear students, let us now summarize what we have discussed. A scanning electron microscope is a powerful tool in the hands of researchers for range of applications in the field of life science. The technique can very well be utilized for elemental analysis. A scanning electron microscopy provides three dimensional image of object at higher magnification. Images are available at nano scale. High magnification derived from use of electron instead of photon for visualization. Metals are not subjected for sample preparation methods, while non metals require coating with conducting materials before analysis. We have also discussed transmission electron microscope in a separate module. The difference between the technique and the same are apparent. In TAM or transmission electron microscopy, electrons which pass through the sample are detected by the detector. However, in case of scanning electron microscopy, electrons scattered from the sample surface are detected by the detector. Transmission electron microscopy can provide information on internal structure of the cell while same is not. The module on TAM and SAM have provided you the basic insight into working of electron microscopic techniques. I hope the modules on these two techniques will make you understand the these two techniques in a better way. I must also thank for paying attention to modules on microscopic techniques.